Yeah, we're back in the morning yeah. brew, and uh, a variety of guests today is tremendous. Aaron, Aaron Muffaletto and Larry Aaron's uh, hosting away here on, on the morning brew. Uh, we have with us uh, Carol Lopez, who is site manager at uh, Casa San Isidro, uh, the Guterres, how do you pronounce it? Minge. Minge House. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, I, I have to confess, I've not been, but we've had many people on talking about events there, so I gotta get down to see you guys. Uh, well, you can come this Saturday. Uh, well, good. <laughs> How convenient. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, we're up in Corrales, uh -huh. and we're right across the, the road, Old Church Road, from the old Adobe Church there. So we're in kind of a little well, historic I've been close. I've been um, in the neighborhood. quadrant, you yeah. know, right there in the village. And okay. this Saturday, we're having a, a free program from 1 to 4, and you can visit for free. We're open, we're going to have self-guided tours, and we're going to have a really great lecture by the curator, the art curator of the Albuquerque Museum, Andrew Connors, oh. Oh, yes. about an upcoming exhibit called Behind Closed Doors. So that'll happen at two in the old church. So we're teaming up oh. with the Corrales Historical Society and to do a, a large program. Andrew's been on our show many times, and he's mm -hmm. really interesting. He's yeah, got a following of, of, uh, of people that like to hear him speak. And the really cool thing is that this exhibit, which is really about the rich and famous, if you will, of the Spanish colonial world, mm -hmm. you know, in Peru, um, Chile, you know, all over Mexico, all over the, the, the New World, uh -huh. It's a great um, counterpoint to what we have at Casa San Ysidro because the items that we have at Casa San Ysidro are what, the, what I like to say the 98% had in their homes. So it's a really nice contrast, and that's what Andrew's going to be talking about. Right. So give us a little background on Casa San Ysidro and like the history of why it's important to people. Well, it, it is very important to all of us because of the collection of Casa San Ysidro, which was compiled by... Um, Ward Allen and Shirley Minge mm -hmm. in the 1950s and 60s, they got all of the ordinary stuff. You know, they've got, they've got the, the ordinary type of tools and furnishings and weavings and retablos, all of the ironwork, all that Spanish colonial furnishings throughout New Mexico, and they preserved it by collecting it mm -hmm. and keeping it at their home. They lived there oh, in this wow. adobe home. And uh, now it's a, a property of the city of Albuquerque and everyone else that lives here. It's all of our museum. And Beautiful. by visiting there, we can see that ordinary people made extraordinary things in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. How old is the house? Well, part of the house was built in about 1875, and the rest of the property was built by Mr. Minge and his uh, friends there in Corrales through the 1950s and 60s, but in the most traditional way. And many of the architectural features were salvaged from homes or buildings that were being torn down or that had been torn down mm. throughout New Mexico. And then he saved those features like a windowsill or a door or a viga and put them in place in his home. Oh, wow. So it's, it's really a very unique place. Yeah. Architecturally, is it an adobe home, a territorial home, or both? Yes, that's <laughs> yes, right. Yes. That's the right answer. <laughs> yes, it is. I've seen all pictures of it. Yeah, it. it's yeah. all adobe, and um, uh, much of it is territorial. But Mr. Mingay wanted, you know, he was a historian, and he wanted to... Um, show how architecture changed over time and so different rooms have different features but very much I would say a territorial type style in in general <laughs> <laughs> so was the house classified as a museum then or mm -hmm. is it? it is it's it's owned by the Albuquerque Museum it's on the state register of historic properties and um, uh, it is so unique that we have to remind people when they come that much of this was built in the 20th century because yeah. it looks so historic. And it was because it was done in the historic way with pigment, soil pigment that's put on the walls for color instead mm. of paint. Interesting. All right. We have a picture of it, Dan. Let's, let's put that up. Uh, no, that's not it. Hmm. That is not it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's it. Yeah, that doesn't that, look that real didn't, That didn't look that's like us to me. <laughs> <laughs> that's 
okay. Wow. <laughs> well, we're um, we're right in the village Corrales. We're uh, part of the story that we tell is also the agricultural story of New Mexico and Corrales, mm -hmm. and we have a heritage field right you know next to us as part of our property, and we're surrounded by farms, mm -hmm. and uh, it's such an important story that we tell. We can tell about the use of water, the importance of acequias. Um, and how the everyday farmers and people lived throughout New Mexico. And it's really emblematic of how in New Mexico, I think we could say that families, farms, and faith have endured for centuries. And we really get that sense when we visit Casa San Ysidro. What, what inside the house is your favorite thing? What? My very favorite thing, and I, I did send a picture of it, I don't know if they'll find it, is an old spinning wheel. We don't know exactly how old it is, maybe uh, late 19th century, mm -hmm. but it's all handmade. Parts of it are salvaged from different things, and there are two heel heels from like a lady's shoe uh -huh. that are are put on it in order to hold what would have been where the wool would have been and oh. i love this and there's also a hand forged piece of metal for uh the turning of this of this wheel i love that so it's, they made parts and they made things you to don't you know how to get the machine to work that's right when you're really living on the frontier you use whatever you can and it is truly extraordinary and i also like one, there's so many things, but we have a huge metal um, copper cazo or copper pot mm. that was made in Mexico and stamped in it is the date 1680. Wow. So uh, that traveled up from Mexico on the uh, Camino Real uh -huh. and was, you know, I like to, I look at that and I think of all the wool that was probably dyed in it, um, the soup that was made in it, yeah. the babies that may have been bathed yeah. in it. And because th that would have been, wow. you know, the one piece that we would have had in our home. So, yeah. uh, one more fast question yeah. here. As a homeowner, uh, maintaining the house is always important. How do you maintain this property? Well, it's it's a continual process, and uh, we always have to keep mindful of the adobe and uh, re mud. Uh, often mm -hmm. and uh, it's just you just keep doing it but you know it's it's a very organic kind of uh, architecture it's made from the earth yeah. and uh, so we have a lot of uh, uh, material to make adobe mm -hmm. and and we just keep yeah. doing it again and again it's out in the yeah. backyard mm -hmm. that's right <laughs> and it's it's just a wonderful example of that organic architecture well, thank you well, let's go drop by and check it out please do we'd love to have you the Gutierrez Mingue house Casa San Isidro out in Corrales. Uh, Carol Lopez is site manager. Thank you, Carol. I learned a lot today. Thank well, you me very too. Much. Yeah. We'll come <laughs> and see it. Thank okay. you so much. All right, thanks. Morning Brew continues. Final Cup is next.